In the late 1990s, a revolutionary force emerged that totally didn't give music executives any sleepless nights. This is the tale of Napster, a name that became synonymous with innovation, controversy, and a whole lot of legal headaches. So buckle up, grab your popcorn, and prepare for a roller coaster ride that'll have you scratching your head and saying, well, that escalated quickly. Picture this, a time when music was just something you bought in shiny discs and cassette tapes. Then, like a bunch of digital Robin Hoods, Sean Fanning and Sean Parker came along and unleashed Napster upon the world. It was a grand scheme to let people share music with each other, completely dodging the conventional music industry game. Genius? Oh, absolutely. Legal? Well, that's where things got a bit dicey. As Napster skyrocketed to fame, it didn't exactly win any awards for being a darling of the music bigwigs. Major record labels and artists got wind of this digital free-for-all and decided to rain on Napster's parade. They weren't too thrilled about their carefully crafted tunes being swapped like trading cards at a schoolyard. Copyright infringement, anyone? Fast forward to 2001 and cue the dramatic courtroom showdown. The federal court pointed its mighty gavel at Napster and yelled, you're guilty of contributory copyright infringements. It was like a digital slap on the wrist that sent Napster packing, shutting down its central servers faster than you could say oops. But hold on to your laughter because the plot thickens. Napster's story didn't just fizzle out like a forgotten pop song. No, no. It left behind a legacy that would give even the juiciest telenovelas a run for their money. With Napster out of the picture, legitimate digital music services swooped in like knights in shining armor. Apple's iTunes and the ever so catchy tunes of Spotify took center stage. The irony? These platforms were everything Napster wasn't. Legal, organized, and respectful of copyright. Oh, and let's not forget the technological twist. Napster's wild journey inspired a galaxy of innovative platforms and services that redefined the entertainment universe. It's like Napster's rebellious spirit birthed an entire tech revolution while chilling in its digital afterlife. So why did Napster fall from grace? Well, when you mix an audacious disregard for copyright rules with a sprinkle of courtroom drama and a dollop of financial woes, you get a recipe for a digital disaster. Napster's free-for-all ethos collided headfirst with the cold, hard realities of intellectual property rights and legal battles. Oops, indeed. Today, Napster exists as a legal and legitimate music streaming service that offers a vast library of songs to its subscribers. The platform has come a long way from its controversial past as a peer-to-peer file-sharing network. After facing legal battles and shutting down its original service, Napster underwent a transformation and rebranded itself as a legal music streaming platform, embracing the digital music landscape in a legitimate way. Napster was acquired by various companies over the years, and it shifted its focus to become a licensed music service. It was acquired by Rhapsody International in 2011 and then rebranded as Napster in 2016. This newer Napster offers a subscription-based model where users can access a vast catalog of music for a monthly fee. That was it for today. Please hit that like button and subscribe for more dead tech stories.